Moo! Moo! The food is over here. My God. You can't get this big galoot to move. No! Sheesh! Shit! You get... Gosh! Darn it! Okay. <sighs> okay. Who are now an older man. If you're a lady, a woman, who has seen a young man being picked on his whole life, then you will totally understand why we did what we had to do. And if you're not one of those people, you've never seen that, you have no idea what I'm talking about, then consider yourself lucky. And make sure that you are never the one doing the picking. I thought I said enough. But... Okay, there. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Thank you, Ivy, for adding that. Thank you for adding your two cents worth. <laughs> Folks, left to here. And what I'm gonna have to do today is something that a lot of you are not going to understand. A man will. A man will understand just fine, but a woman will more than likely not quite get it. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, let me turn my camera around and kind of tell you what's going on and we'll talk more about it. Stick around and ladies, try to put yourself in a man's perspective, in a man's shoes, just during this one video, and then get out of his shoes fast. You don't want to stick around in a man's shoes too long. Put yourself in a man's shoes just for a moment and then get out while you can. All right, I'm gonna flip my video camera around and I have a really nice, this is exactly what I wanna show you guys right here in front of me. All right, let's go. Waylon, this is about you. It's a very sloppy day, okay? It is, it is sloppy. And uh, we need the rain, so we're not complaining. But what I wanna talk to you guys about right now is Waylon. Guys, Waylon is going to eventually be a herd bull. He has no voice whatsoever right now. And um, I think that every one of us men are fragile, especially when we're younger and impressionable. And if we're not careful, because Waylon is over here with these other cows, even though they're calves, they're big. They're a lot bigger than he is. And he's being picked on by everyone from Jolene to Santoro, Annabelle. Moo's not even letting him eat. And so if we're not very, very careful, what's going to happen is he's going to develop a complex. And unfortunately, that complex can stay with him for the rest of his life. So what I'm going to do, what I think I have to do, is go ahead and take both Jolene and Waylon, somehow get them back into the pasture with Annie, Ernie, and um, Annie, Ernie, and Indy. Excuse me, guys. Don't kick at me, please. Um, and then we're not done with that. At that point, I want to take Jolene and wailing and eventually put them up into the front pasture with our littles with our goats Waylon, i believe at that point Waylon will see himself as big even though he's not big big he's bigger than all those around him and i believe if jolene does not does not have all of these guys antagonizing and you know kind of encouraging her to be mean she'd stop being mean to him and at some point he could kind of grow up realizing that hey I'm a bull, or I'm a man. And uh, don't make me go into all of the psychological stuff behind it, but I'm just doing this from experience that if you ever have a bull, calf, who's picked on, I, I, you know what, let's just say, let's just take a little boy. If you have a young man, uh, if you have a child who's being picked on in school and you do not try to find a way to address that. 
it's not going to fix itself. It may at some point, the, pick, the picking on may lessen as they get older, but he's always going to be stuck with that complex. And so we do not want Waylon to come out and have be stuck with some kind of an inferiority complex or whatever else doctors may call it. And so we are going to take Waylon and, sorry, we're going to re-separate him. And so these three will be together. Jolene and Waylon will be together. And they're going to become littles. They're going to be big littles. And if that makes no sense to you, if it may really, if it doesn't make any sense to you whatsoever, then um, you're going to have to just go read about it because I don't know how else to say it than the way I told you. You, you really do need your breed bull to have a very high self-esteem. You do. You need your breed bull, your head bull, the head honcho, the... The, what, are the, what does Rick call the uh, the lead horse or the alpha male? He calls that something. Um, so if you're a young lady, you're probably saying, wait a minute, Lester, doesn't that not apply to ladies also? And I don't know the mindset of a lady. But what I do know is that in uh, the animal kingdom, especially with males, there they go right there. There goes Santoro running Waylon down the lane. And so what happens is you cannot become an alpha male ever if you start off if you start off your life with an, an inferiority complex. And so as far as the female mind goes, I don't know how all that works. I mean, yes, we've all heard of mean girls clubs and we know how girls can be mean to each other. But uh, as far as your alpha male, and you really do need all of your herd bulls to know early on that I am the man. I am the one. You need that for protection later on, uh, especially whenever the herd begins to grow. And whenever that one bull honestly does have to take all of the other uh, cows in the herd under his wing. And you want him to have the, the courage and the... Um, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm gonna let Rick explain it to y'all better. Rick, help a brother out, will you? All right, so you're probably saying, so Lester, how are you gonna do this? How are you gonna conquer this feat? First things first, I'm letting all the horses out. Come on. I can catch the horses easily. Come on, horses, all horses, come on. That includes donkeys, let's go. Come on. We will let all of the horses and donkeys out. They can run around the yard, they can graze the pastures, do whatever y'all wanna do. Uh, I'm letting you out, don't act like you've escaped. And so once I get the, all the uh, horses and donkeys out of the way, then I can work with the cows. All right, there's that, okay. So all of our horses and donkeys are fine. They're gonna run around behind me there and make total asses of themselves. And that's okay. Now for the cows. So don't forget, what we need is for most of these cows here to stay inside this pasture in this little corral area. And yes, guys, it's a sloppy day. We've not worked the pasture at all. We've not raked the corral. And so it's sloppy. This is a farm. But we do need this little munchkin over here. Santoro, cut it out. We do need this little munchkin over here into the alpaca pasture where we can eventually sort them out. I'm gonna do that using feed. All right, we're gonna take everybody inside the alpaca pasture at first, but I'm only going to drop a little bit of food in there. And then once we do that, hold on, I will drop more food outside of there, which will pull move and friends out. So we need to get Waylon inside here with us. Come on in, Waylon. Waylon, turn. Moo, get off of me. Waylon, make the turn. Okay, we got Waylon inside. Now we're gonna try to start getting everybody else back out of here. I'm gonna put the bucket over here. 
Jolene, I want you to stay. Go. I want you to stay. So what we need, we need Moo to come on out. We need Rip to come on out as well. I do want Jolene to stay. Jolene, you're going to stay. Jolene, you're going to stay, little girl. You're, you're staying. There we go. All right, if we can get Moo out of here, we're looking good. So I know a lot of y'all are going to be upset because you're thinking, oh my God. No, no, you know. Get, sh 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 need you to stay in there. Moo, let's go. So I need Moo to come on out. If I can get Moo to come on out, we're looking pretty good. Now let's not forget that eventually all of these cows here, these, these three, we got our, this bull, this little heifer, and then uh, the big galoot, Moo, will all be moving pastures. Come on, Moo. Suck, 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 suck. Come on, Moo. Here we go. This way, Moo. Come on. Come on, Moo. 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 The food is over here. My God. You can't get this big galoot to move. No! Sheesh! Shit! You get... Gosh! Darn it! Okay. <sighs> okay. This is not what I had planned. And it's raining. It's raining and I'm going to get these amazing crocs wet. So I'm not one to pour food out onto the ground. I hate pouring feed on the ground. I just don't have a place to pour it here in this vicinity. So listen to me. I'm gonna break one of my own rules. I always tell the kids, do not be pouring feed on the dirt. Do not pour feed on the dirt. But if I wanna get Moo and friends to come out, I need to have some feed spread around but right now I don't know how to, I don't have a place to spread it. So I am, I am, I'm pouring feed onto the dirt. Come on, Moo. Suck, 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 suck. Come on. I need Moo out of there. Annabelle, you go out too. All right. I need you out. I need you out. All right. That was easier than what I thought. Sorry, Jolene. Here, let me have that. You go eat off the dirt, you big galoot. I'll put you some real... Listen, I'm going to put them some real feed out later. Now, I'm going to tell you all right now. Already, in just that short amount of time. Seriously, already. He is a hundred times more comfortable than what he was a minute ago. Come on, buddy. He's going over there eating on some grass. I'm going to get Jolene. Jolene! Jolene's gonna go hang out with the alpaca. She's like, I'm just gonna hang out with these alpaca over here. And, uh, hey buddy, come here. He's starving. Not literally starving, but uh, I bet you he's not eaten much since we put him into the pasture with the other cows yesterday. And that's sad to me. Come here. All right, I poured them quite a bit of feed out here on the grass. Jolene, this will be difficult for her at first. She will struggle here at first because let me sit down on top of this bucket and just hang out for a minute. Uh, Jolene will forever be a partner to uh, Waylon. And so as of right now, she will not have a reason to pick on him if they're only in here together. I know. I know, sweet guy. So for anyone who's only seen this video for the first time, you may not know the story behind Waylon. He is uh, the same age as Jolene. She's three weeks older. But I want you to look at the size difference in the two. That's because Waylon has been with his mom on a pasture where there was no grass. Literally. Guys, if you saw that video, there was no grass. And mom was just withering away and she was pretty much not giving Waylon enough nutrients because she wasn't getting enough nutrition and so Waylon's small but uh, we know for a fact that over here he got plenty of grass we've already planted winter grass so that will start popping up here pretty soon we uh, are blessed to be able to afford enough grains 
alfalfa hay, of course dry hay that we've kept out all summer long. And that's why this one over here is in, is in such great shape is that she's been eating really good for the last three weeks, really good. Like probably overeating actually. But um, so what we've just done for now is we've separated Jolene and Waylon from this crew. Now, you don't have to worry because I'm going to eventually, these guys will be fine. They're not, listen, these three are not going to miss Jolene or Waylon. They're not. As much as you would like to humanize them, like I do, you still have that little Santoro there, the bull, who's always going to be the bully. He's always going to push her around as much as he can. But what we cannot do is allow him to push around Waylon. We can't because that will give Waylon a complex. And we can't allow a bull to grow up with a complex. Now, there will come a time whenever Santoro there will grow up. Waylon will grow up in different pastures, separated. And at some point when these two bulls get to the certain age and they are, they're both herd bulls, then we'll, we'll have a better judge of who would probably kick each other's ass if they were ever allowed into the same pasture. Of course, they never will be. These three will be going over to Jake's and these will become Jake's bull, uh, Jake's bull and Jake's heifer, Jake's steer, and that big galoot right there. And then of course, Jake will also get little Miley, another heifer, so Santoro will be set up well. So these three will be leaving us at some point. These two here will always be a partnership and any new calves, any heifers that are born to any of the girls over at Longhorn Lusters will come here and we'll be able to hang out there and become a herd with Waylon. I hope that made sense to y'all. I feel like you probably don't have any idea what I did and why I'm doing it. Seriously, I don't think that many of y'all have any idea of what I did and why, I, why I'm doing it. But there is... Uh, there is reason to this madness, my friends. And this is for his psychological well-being, his mental health, his, his state of mind. I want him to grow up and be secure and confident in who he is. And that's not going to happen as long as we have every single one of these guys taking turns picking on him. And I'll say it one last time. I don't know how that affects the mindset of a little heifer like Annabelle, or like Jolene. But I do know for a fact that anybody, every rancher will tell you, you do not let a bull, a, a, a future herd bull, ever develop an inferiority complex. And that's what was going to happen. This is only day number four. And already I'm seeing him just trying to shy away from everybody. And we do not want that to happen these two together i'm certain will be fine okay let's go see what our horses have gotten into while i was over here i'm taking my bucket i'm leaving the gate closed they can eat the grass they have some grains there if they want them these guys it's not even dinner time yet so this is not an official feeding if y'all think that i'm done feeding for the day then i'm not because that was a simple matter of using some feed to help me Divide pastures. Look out, you big doofus. <laughs> I do love him, but he's a big doofus. Okay, let's go see what the horses have gotten themselves into. I don't think they have a chance to do a whole lot of damage. I did close my gate to my feed room here, so I'm not worried about any of this. Y'all give me one moment. And let's see if we can find a way to get our horses back inside the pasture. I'm going to actually use some of this Dr. Pole's feed to do that. We use feed, my friends. We use feed. Motivated by food. A lot of folks say that our government... This is scary. 
but there's a lot of people that say our government, all of the food shortages, there are people that say, mostly conspiracy theory kind of people, that a lot of the food shortages are caused purposely so that your government can control you. Hey, do not kick me. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's all go back inside our pastures. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Hey, Billy. So, yeah. So I know that we use food to control animals. Everyone knows that. And so, could it be true that food is also used to control the human population? Scary. Come on. Boy, if you kick me, if you end up kicking me just trying to get around to this food bucket. Here, I'll just drop it for you right there. And I'm going to back out of the way. So, the cows are not going to get anywhere near it as long as the, as long as the lead horse is there. I cannot think of the name of that for anything. It's not called the lead horse, is it? It's not called the alpha horse either. There's a name for that. Uh, head horse. Head? The head horse? Is it called the head horse? Hey, voodoo! <whistles> is it called the head horse? I don't know why I have that on the tip of my tongue. Not head honcho, not head horse. They call that something. And like I said, guys, I hate putting, pouring dirt here in the, uh, pouring dirt, uh, grain in the dirt. Come on, let's walk on over here. I don't like my animals eating off the dirt. I don't like all the asthma. I tell you what, there's a farm channel that I follow. Well, not really follow much anymore. Who's having a serious issue with a bull with pneumonia. And no one, no one seems to understand why the bull has pneumonia. And I'm like, Bacor, I really, I'm like, because you pour your food across the dirt, you dumbass. Every day you're throwing your grains across the dirt. And your animals are forced to eat off the dirt instead of a trough. Or at least put it on the grass because as they're sitting there eating off the dirt... They're sucking in and inhaling all those uh, particles of dirt and dust. And that's not good for your animals, y'all. I did not say any names, so I don't need all the trolls to be saying, I know who you're talking about, Lester. And he, that was very disrespectful and rude what you said there, Lester. No, if you love animals, then you'll one day understand that when Lester gets on a rant about people with dirty water so people have i heard this particular farmer actually explain to his son what algae is and he used his own water troughs to do so <laughs> like my god oh my god so yeah that's the blind leading the blind and if you're a follower and a supporter of that page then you're gullible to allow that no you allow that mess to happen because what does it take to make a change what does it take to make a change people to stand up and say uh-uh no enough is enough you ain't doing this we ain't putting up with this yeah so now we have these two over here that still have a whole nother pasture to make it into these two here cannot walk this fence line all night. I'm going to call them on up into our pasture with our littles. But I have to do that using food. Let me get all the horses back in first, though. I'm going to stop the video in for now because I'm just rambling about nonsense. All right, I will end this video by saying all of the horses are back in. The alpaca are fine. They're doing what alpaca do. I'm going to walk over here and show you that Jolene and Waylon are fine. And guys, I promise you something. If you truly are concerned 
about an animal's best interest, then what you want to see is an animal being able to eat in peace and they have access to green grass, they have access to hay if they choose it. Of course, they're given their daily dose of grains. They have fresh water from a trough that's changed out regularly. And more than anything else, and which is our biggest concern right now, is they're not getting picked and bullied on from, from, the, from daylight till dark and probably even throughout the night. And so, as much as we all love the idea of, oh, Uncle Moo and his little family, well, Uncle Moo was not doing anything to prevent the bullying. And so, we had to step in and do what we thought was right as the human. And time, my friends, time will show you that we made the right call.